Hi, I'm Andy and this is question 7 on the OCR Mechanics 1 paper from January 2010. To find more video solutions for this paper or more revision resources, click on the i in the top right hand corner. In question 7, we've got a winch dragging a log of mass 600 kilograms up a slope inclined at 10 degrees to the horizontal. It says the coefficient of friction between the log and the slope is 0.15 and the log is initially at rest at the foot of the slope. The acceleration of the log is 0.11 meters per second squared. In part one, we need to calculate the tension in the cable. So let's start by drawing a diagram and adding our forces to that. We've got a tension force pulling the log up the slope. We don't know the value of that, so we'll just call it T. We've also got the weight going vertically downwards. The mass of the log is 600 kilograms, which means the weight of the log will be 600 G. As friction is involved in the problem, we're also going to be interested in the normal contact force, which will be perpendicular to the slope. As we know the log is moving up the slope, we've got a frictional force coming down the slope, which we'll call F. We'll also add the direction of acceleration and the coefficient of friction to our diagram for reference. So in this problem, we're going to need to resolve perpendicular to the slope and parallel to the slope. If you're not sure which to do first, look at what unknowns you've got. If I was to work parallel to the slope, I wouldn't know T and I wouldn't know F. If I work perpendicular to the slope, the only thing I don't know is R. And actually, once we've found R, we can use that to calculate the value of F. So resolving perpendicular to the slope, we've got R coming out of the slope. And we've got a component of the 600G force going into the slope. And the angle between the force and the direction into the slope here will be 10 degrees, same as the angle here. You can prove that using basic trigonometry. So we've got minus 600G. As we know the angle in between the force and the direction that we're going, it will be cos 10 degrees. They're the only two forces we've got, and it's not accelerating in the perpendicular direction, so that must equal zero. So R will equal 600G cos 10 degrees. Now we could work out the value of 600G cos 10 and store that in our calculator, but as we're not asked to find the normal contact force, we may as well just leave it in its exact form here. Next, we're going to resolve parallel to the slope. This time we've got T going up the slope, We've got F going down the slope, and we've also got a component of the 600 G force going down the slope. So we're going to have minus 600 G sine 10 degrees. The log is accelerating up the slope at 0.11 meters per second squared. So we've got 600 multiplied by 0.11. At this stage, it's always useful to check the signs of everything compared to the diagram. So as it's accelerating up the slope, anything going up the slope should be positive. So T should be positive, which it is. F is down the slope and the weight is acting down the slope. They should both be negative. The acceleration should be positive as well. Okay, from here, we can substitute in for F. We know that F equals mu times R. And we know mu, and we've got an expression for R here. So we've got T minus mu, which is 0.15 multiplied by R, which is 600G cos 10. And then we've got minus 600G sine 10. The right hand side can stay the same. Now we could write down another step manipulating this, but all we're really gonna do is add these two terms over to the other side and then calculate it. So we may as well do that in one go. So we've got 600 times 0.11 plus 600G sine 10 plus 0.15 times 600g cos 10, which gives us 1,955 or 1,960 to three significant figures. In part two, we're told the cable suddenly breaks after dragging the log a distance of 10 meters. And we need to show that deceleration of the log while continuing to move up the slope is 3.15 meters per second squared, correct to three significant figures. And then in part B, we need to calculate the time taken after the cable breaks for the log to return to its initial position at the foot of the slope. So before we start these two parts, it's going to be useful to consider what's actually going to happen throughout the whole of the journey, because we're going to need to know how long it takes from when it snaps to when it gets back to the start. So this journey takes part in three stages. The first part we've already done some calculations for. The log is being dragged up the slope 
by some force T. After that, the tension force will be removed. That means that the acceleration will no longer be 0.11 meters per second squared. In fact, that's what we've got to show in part two, where it says it decelerates at 3.15 meters per second squared. But what you need to be aware of is that although it's decelerating, it's still very briefly moving up the slope. And that means the frictional force will still be downwards. But then as it's decelerating, at some point it will reach a velocity of zero, at which point it will then travel down the slope. And when it's traveling down the slope, friction has to oppose motion, so the friction will go up the slope, which means again the acceleration will change. So now we'll do part A, showing the deceleration is 3.15 meters per second squared. So we'll call this the first part of the journey. We're now interested in the second part of the journey. And during this part of the journey, the cable has snapped, so there is no tension force. So we're left with these forces here, and the acceleration is no longer at 0.11 meters per second. In fact, we know now that the acceleration will be down the slope. So we could do another calculation to resolve perpendicular to the slope to find R, but we get exactly the same thing as last time because the perpendicular forces haven't changed. So R is still 600 G cos 10 degrees. The forces parallel to the slope are similar, but they've now changed because we've got rid of T. So resolving parallel to the slope will take downwards to be the positive direction because that's the direction it's accelerating in. Notice though that the velocity is still up the slope. So we've got F going down the slope. We've got a component of the weight going down the slope. So that'll be plus 600 G sine 10 this time. So that's different to the last part. And they're the only two forces. So that is going to equal 600 times the acceleration. F is calculated in the same way as last time. We've got 0.15 times 600 G cos 10. And we could type all this into our calculator and divide by 600 and we'd get our answer. But as we've got 600 in every term here, we can just simplify this to 0.15 G cos 10 plus G sine 10 equals a and in fact if you're doing this in the exam you probably wouldn't write down that step you just put that calculation into your calculator and that gives us 3.15 if we round to three significant figures now a lot of the time when we work out a deceleration it would be negative the reason this answer isn't negative is that we chose down the slope to be positive and as the particle is moving up the slope that means that the acceleration is the opposite direction to the velocity it must be decelerating okay in part b we need the time taken after the cable breaks for the log to return to its initial position at the foot of the slope okay so we've got the first part of the journey when the tension is pulling the log up the slope we've got the second part of the journey where the cable has snapped but the log is still moving up the slope but decelerating and then we've got the third part of the journey, which we're going to modify over here. This diagram isn't quite correct yet. In which the log is now moving down the slope, which means that this frictional force will now have to be in the opposite direction. So once again, R has not changed because we haven't changed any of the perpendicular forces. So resolving parallel to the slope. This time, remember, acceleration is still going to be down the slope. So we'll take that to be positive. So we've got 600 G sine 10 minus f equals 600 a substituting in for f again we get 600 g sine 10 degrees minus 0 0.15 times 600 g cos 10 equals 600 a this time we will do the manipulations on our calculator imagine we've divided through by 600 and we'll just put the rest into our calculator so we've got 9.8 times sine 10 minus 0.15 lots of 9.8 cos 10 which gives us an acceleration down the slope of 0.254 but as we're going to be using this value later I'm going to store this on my calculator so I'll store this as a and in fact what I should have actually done earlier is store this value here because I don't want to be using this 3.15 I've got the exact value but that should be in my calculator if I move up in office here so I'm going to store this value as B okay now that we know the acceleration at all three parts of the journey we need to think about our SUVA equations for each part of the journey 
So you might think the first part is irrelevant because you're only interested in what happens after the cable snaps. But what we do need to know is the velocity at the point when the cable snaps because that will become the initial velocity in part two. So we'll call this part one and we'll write down our values for suvat. The one we're interested in is the velocity just when the cable is about to snap. So it starts at rest. The acceleration up the slope was 0.11 meters per second squared. And it says in the question the log is dragged for 10 meters before the cable snaps. So I'm going to use v squared is u squared plus 2as. So I'm going to get v squared equals u squared, which is 0 plus 2as. So 2 times 0 0.11 times 10. which gives me a value of V to be 1.483. But as we're going to use that later, we'll store that. So we'll store this one as C. Now that we know when the cable snaps, in part two, the middle part of our journey, we can use that as our initial velocity. In this case, we don't know how far it travels up the slope. We're not interested in that. We do know at the top of the slope, though, the velocity has to be zero because that's when it's just about to turn around and come the other way. And we know the acceleration, which we calculated earlier, was 3.15. But we have to be careful here because that's a deceleration and it's acceleration down the slope. And we've put this as a positive quantity, which means that's going up the slope. So this needs to be minus 3.15 meters per second squared. Okay, t is the quantity we're trying to find, so here I'll be using v equals u plus a t. So naught equals 1.48 minus 3.15 t. So all I need to do is manipulate this. I'll add the 3.15 t to the other side and then divide through by 3.15. Okay, I've already got this stored on my calculator here. So I'm going to do 1.48, which is this, divided by my 3.15 which if I look up here, I stored as B on my calculator. And that gives me a time from when it's the cable snaps to the top of the slope as 0.47 and so on. But as I'm going to require that value later, I'm going to store this in my calculator as well. Lots of values stored for this question. So I'm going to store that as D. Now we'll look at the final part of the journey. This is for when it's going down the slope. Earlier we calculated the acceleration as 0.254. The initial velocity is zero. This time I'm gonna take down the slope to be positive. As I'm doing three separate calculations, I can, if I want, choose different directions as positive for different ones. But I have to be careful with numbers that are linked in between them. For example, when I use the V here in the U there, I have to be careful about which way round each quantity is. I'm not interested in the velocity at the bottom of the slope. I'm interested in the time, but I also need the displacement. For this, I need to think quite carefully and I actually need to go back to part two because the displacement will be the 10 meters it travels up the slope before it snaps, plus the small amount extra that it travels up the slope after the cable has snapped. So I'm gonna go back to here and I need to actually calculate S for this next part. And I'm gonna here have 10 plus whatever that will be. So in order to do this, I could use any of these values here. I'm gonna use the, what, the formula S equals UT plus half AT squared because that's already set up without rearranging and get S equals the 1.48 times 0.47 minus a half times 3.15 times 0.47. I can get an exact value for this calculation because I've got all of these values stored in my calculator. So the 1.48 that's stored as C. And I need to times that by the 0 0.47 which is stored as D. Then minus 0 0.5 for half. The 3.15 is stored as B. And then I need D squared. And that gives me a distance travelled up the slope of 0.349. Again, I'm going to store this in my calculator just in case anything goes wrong and I need to reuse the value. So this equals 0.349, which we stored as E. So now I know this 0.349, I can put this in for my value here. And I'm interested in finding out T. 
So I'm going to use s equals ut plus half a t squared again. So I have 10 plus 0.349, which I can write as 10.349, equals ut plus half a t squared. Well, u is 0, so that part becomes 0. We just get half times 0.254 times t squared. Okay, so all I've got to do to solve for t here is take this value, multiply it by 2 to get rid of the half, divide through by the 0 0.254, and then square root it. You can, if you want, write down extra steps in here, but you're not going to get any extra marks usually for that. So if you're confident enough to, just do it in your calculator. So here's the value of the 0 0.349. I'll start by adding 10 to that, and then I'll multiply it by 2, and then I'll divide through by the 0 0.245, which I stored as, sorry, 0 0.254, which I stored as A, and then I'll square root to find out t. And that gives me 9.02 and so on. So the total time will be the 9.02 that I've just calculated from going down the slope and also the extra little bit of time going up the slope plus the 0 0.47 which is stored as d. So this value here plus d gives me 9.50 if I round to three significant figures. Okay, and that's the end of part B. Just one extra thing to add. You could have done this question without storing these values and just adding a few extra values of precision on in order to get the right answer. But if you round these values too early in the question, particularly when you're using the numbers several times, like in this part here where I use 0 0.47 twice, actually we should have a squared on there, then you're going to introduce lots of rounding errors into the question and in the end you wouldn't have got anything close to 9.50 here you would have been too far out to get the right answer okay so it's a good idea know how to use your calculator properly know how to store these values and make sure you recall which ones you've stored as which